Oh, wonderful Jesus, we want to see your glory come down once again. We want to see your glory. See your Your glory come down as we praise your name, as we praise your name. Heaven, heaven reign. special touch from you, Holy Spirit. May your power be so real to them. May your presence be so tangible, so very real that they can almost reach out and touch it. In Jesus' wonderful name, we give you praise. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the lives that's about to be transformed through today's telecast. Amen. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. I have a powerful, powerful episode for you today. So I don't want no one to miss this. I want you to go ahead, let your friends know the Brother Henry and You Show is on right now. Go ahead and share this on your timeline. Hit like right there below because I want people to be blessed by what. I am going to share. Can I just say this? I love doing this. I love coming to you every week, whether it's me or while I have another pastor to come on, because 
the Bible tells us to encourage one another just as you are doing. So I want to say thank you for those that are watching and thank you for believing in me. Thank you for allowing me to come into your homes and bless you every week. So I'm so excited about what I'm going to be sharing with you today, a very powerful subject. I'm going to be talking about seeking validation in the wrong places. My, 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 my. Mm. <laughs> Boy, the topic all by itself can preach, can't it? Seeking validation in the wrong places. And I'm going to talk about some things, not what I've heard. I'm not talking about things that somebody had told me. I'm going to be discussing some things that I personally have experienced myself. I would say that this message could be mainly directed towards pastors, towards leaders, and just in general, just believers. But I believe many people that's in ministry, if you are in any form of leadership, I would say this message is mainly directed towards you. As a leader myself, I used to struggle with wanting to be accepted, wanting to be approved or validated by what the people thought of me or what they said about me. So hopefully if you are in that area today if you're struggling in that area hopefully there's some today i can share with you that will break you free from that because it is a bondage and it is something that the lord does not want in your life and i would like to start out with this scripture in psalms chapter 37 verse 5 through 6 it says commit your way to the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as noonday. What does it mean to be validated? What does that word validation mean? The word validation just simply means to affirm, uh, to approve, uh, confirmation. And if we all were to be honest, each one of us, we love the approval and the confirmation and the affirmation of others. Let's just face it. Let's just be real about it. There is no human being on this planet Earth that don't want to feel love, that don't want to feel accepted, that don't want to feel approved. But the problem is we're seeking validation in every place outside of Christ. So basically today, I want to just come here and just share my testimony about my need of validation and approval of others and how God has set me free from that. Let me share with you very briefly about my past struggles with validation. Number one, Conform to the image of others wanted me to be. Let me share with you right quick some of my own personal struggles in the past of dealing with being validated from others. Number one, I always felt the need to conform, that means to comply with a rule or a law or a standard of others. I, I truly couldn't be who God created me to be. Why? Because I was so busy trying to conform, to comply to what other people wanted me to be. And you know what? When you finally break free from that, you will be a threat to some believers. Why? Because until you break free from that, you're, you're literally wearing a mask you're wearing a mask why because you're not being your authentic self god made you unique he made he wired you the way he wanted you to be and you are the original copy somebody say that right now say i am the original copy you are not td jakes you're not paula white you're not ben in here you're, you're not creflo dog god wired you perfectly 
The way you are right now, that's exactly what God wants you to be. But what religion wants you to do, religion shouts this word, change. Change to conform to what I want you to be. And if they don't act like us, if they don't walk like us, if they don't talk like us, if they don't preach like us, if they don't dress the way we dress, sometimes we tend to become very critical and become very judgmental. Why? Because they are not conforming to what we think they should be. But that day that you cease from seeking validation from church folks will be the day you will become a threat to much of the body of Christ. Why? Because you're being your authentic self and some believers cannot accept that. They can't take that. And we need to realize this. We serve a real God. We live in a real world. And we have real problems. And we got people out there today that's looking for authentic Christians. That's what they're looking for. They, they, they don't got time for all this other stuff. So it's time for us to realize we don't need to conform to what everybody else wants us to be. We just need to conform to the image of Christ and what he's already created you to be. The next thing I used to struggle with was growth or numbers. You know, when I first started my show, it, it didn't have many viewers. When I used to preach at certain places, five, six people used to show up. They used to bother me. And I often speak with pastors who, even today, struggle in this area. And I believe what I'm about to share is going to bless you. I interviewed a pastor one time, and he took me out on his backyard, and I began to somewhat become transparent with him. I said, you know what, I'm, I'm struggling with numbers, and I'm, you know, I have a problem. I feel like nobody's listening, nobody's paying attention, nobody ain't showing up at my meetings. You know, is it something about me? What am I doing wrong? You know, seeking validation. And he said this, he said, Brother Henry, and remember, he took me out on his backyard. He said, do you see all those trees out there? I said, yes, sir, I do. He says, the trees are symbolic to people. But he says, you can't see the root, can you? I said, no. He said, that's exactly what your ministry is doing to people right now. You will never know. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Pastor, you will never know the seeds that you are planting in people's lives. The Bible tells us to despise not small beginnings. Sometimes we want a huge, big church, but we need to be faithful where God has you now and use the resources that you have to win the loss. So at the end of the day, I'm not validated by numbers. That's the greatest freedom I've ever experienced before. You know, I know I have hundreds of people watching my show today, but if there was just one that watched, I would be just as content. Why? Because I'm not validated by crowds anymore. I'm not validated by growth. I'm not validated by numbers. Why? Because I am doing what God has called me to do, and I know that God has validated me. Let's move right along. The next thing uh, I, I struggle with, and I believe many people struggle with this, Many of them may not be honest about it, but I used to be a people pleaser. I always wanted to make everybody happy. And let's just face it. Let's just be real about this. I don't care if you're a pastor, evangelist, apostle, prophet, whatever you title yourself, whatever you are, you will not, and I'm going to say this very clearly, you will not make everybody happy. So let's just get over it right now. You won't. You can give the shirt off your back. You can give them money. You can pay for their airplane ticket. I don't care what you do for them. You will not make everybody happy. And guess what? It's not your job to make everybody happy. Let's see what the Bible has to say about this. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Paul says, but as we have been approved by God. Listen to that. That's your validation right now. You have been affirmed. You have been approved, you have been validated by God to entrust with the gospel. Even so we speak, not as men pleasing, but God who tests our hearts. There's another scripture that says, if I were to please men, I should not even be a servant of Christ. So Paul is saying right here, we have been validated 
by God. We have been approved by God. And the only person we should be pleasing is God himself. So I know many people out there in ministry right now, you want to please people. You want to make everybody happy. You don't want to offend anyone. I'm sorry, but ministry doesn't work that way. The last thing I struggled with was the need of acceptance. You know, wanting to fit in, wanting to be like everybody else, wanting to be a part of this group or this clique over here. I tell you, when I experienced this freedom of telling myself, I don't have to fit in. I don't have to be like everybody else. I don't have to fit in this clique over here or that clique over there. Why? Because I am engrafted. Praise God. I am engrafted in Christ Jesus. And if that don't make you excited, if that don't make you happy, something is mighty, mighty wrong. I always felt the need. I, I wanted to fit in. I, I wanted to be accepted by people. I want everybody to like me. Again, all of this is rooted back to wanting to be validated by people. My validation was in the wrong place. Now, I want to say this, and this is a very powerful statement. Every man or woman is seeking validation. But where is he or she seeking validation from? The question is not who's seeking validation. We know every man, every woman is seeking validation. But what source are you seeking validation from? Here's some good news. Today, there is freedom for you. You can be free from wanting to be validated by others. And that is some good news. Jesus doesn't condemn those who seek approval from others. It is seeking it in the wrong places. Are you seeking validation in the wrong places today? Well, let's find out. I created this diagram right here just for you. If you notice within this diagram, there's a circle. And within that circle, you have God. And below that, you have an arrow pointing at you. If you notice within that circle, you see things that people are validated by. And these are validations that you shouldn't be seeking validation from. You see crowds. You see society. You see giving. Some people are validated by friends prestige, power, what they think of me, how do they perceive me, money, people, church attendance, you're not validated by that either, and so forth. I want you to pay close attention to this diagram. Anything that is outside of that circle, your validation is in the wrong place. God is the only one that validates you. Let's set the record straight right now. God is the only one that validates you. Nobody else. Anything outside of the main source, and God is that main source, is a clear indication that your validation is in the wrong place. Now that many of you have probably come to the terms that you may have had your validation in the wrong place. Let's see how God validates us. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalms, ooh, one of my favorite scriptures, Psalms chapter 139. I hope you're getting some out of today's uh, teaching today because you're going to be set free from validation. Psalms chapter 139, verse 14 says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. I will praise you. Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Sometimes you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I will praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And once you grab a hold of that revelation, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you are perfect just the way God made you, just the way God validated you. You won't even care what others think of you. You know what I've often said? I used to say, I don't care what people think about me. But actually, I do care. I care that they think that I'm holy. 
I care that they think that I'm the righteousness of God. I care that they think that when they see me, they see freedom. That freedom looks like authenticity. I care that they see me, that they'll see a young man that's in love and passionate about Jesus Christ. But I do not care how people perceive me and how they view me. And neither should you. So today, you are fearfully, you are wonderfully made. Your validation is not based on what you do. It's not based on any of your accomplishments in life. Your validation is based on what Jesus Christ himself has done for you. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are. Did you know that? It's not about what you do. I'm a pastor. I'm this. That doesn't mean nothing. Throw it out in the water. Many people don't care. Who cares? It's, your validation is not about what you do. Your validation is about who you are. Let's read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I know I'm reading many scriptures today, but I want you guys to get this in your hearts. I want you to be set free from it today. It's a bondage. That's exactly what it is. It's a bondage. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Can you say it again? Say, I am the righteousness of God. Now repeat this. Therefore, I need no man Therefore, I need no woman's, I don't need anybody's validation of me. Praise God. You keep telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself that until you convince yourself of that truth. I don't need nobody else's validation. Just clear it out of your head. We talked about that diagram a while ago. Everything that's outside of that circle, you don't need that power, prestige, and crowd. You don't, numbers, you don't need that. My only validation comes from God. And it's just like that. That's the only validation that you need today. Here is validation. God really loves you and he's crazy about you. Read Psalms chapter 17 verse 8. Here's validation that God was never against you. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, it says, What then shall we say to these things if God be for me? It don't matter if mama's against me, if daddy's against me, if friends against me, cold. That doesn't matter at the end of the day who validates me. If God is for me, if God is validating me, who can be? against me. God never had nothing against you. That is validation. Here's another validation. You are validated. You are approved. You are fully forgiven. You are accepted. You are fully loved at the cross before the foundations of the world. We see that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Here's another validation that I really like. God has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 11. God has a plan. It's not a plan to destroy you. A plan to, it's a plan to give you a perfect peace, an expected end. Do you want that today? Do you want that expected end? This is your validation. God loves you. He has nothing against you. He's already approved you. You're already accepted. You're fearfully and wonderfully man. We just read in Psalms. He has a great plan for your life today. Now that you know that your validation truly comes from, now that you know where your validation truly comes from, let me drop this time bomb on you right here. Whose validation do you crave? I'm going to wait a second because I want that to soak in your heart. Whose validation do you crave? Will you continue to be outside of that circle where your validation comes from, what do they think about me? How do they perceive me? Crowds, power, prestige, all these things, church attendance. 
Will you continue to seek validation outside of that circle? Is that what you really want? Is, is that what you would choose rather than what God says about you? True validation is not about what man thinks about you and what they said about you. Your validation is based on what God says and what God thinks about you. We are loved by Christ as shown in his death. Therefore, we have been given the ultimate validation. This is the only validation that we need and that we have. We have been given, think about that, precious people of God. We have been given the ultimate validation. So today, if you're a pastor, whoever you may be, my prayer for you today that the Lord will set you free from wanting to be validated, from wanting to be proved by people, wanting to be accepted by people, want everybody to like you, be free from that in Jesus' name today. There's so much freedom in that. Be free today. Your validation is in God, and that's the only place it should be.